Thanks, Tom. Uh, so this is going to be joint work with uh, Rachel Howman, uh, Haley Buckingham, and Claire Montgomery, which are from the College of Forestry, as uh, well as uh, Rama Toyer, who's at Notre Dame, and uh, uh, of course, Tom. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about uh, fast simulation for uh, complex problems, uh, particularly sequential decision-making problems. To make it a bit more concrete, uh, I'm going to talk about our motivating domain, which is in wildfire decision optimization or suppression decisions. So we're presented with a landscape and uh, ignition location, as well as uh, weather uh, sub subjected to that uh, wildfire. And we make a suppression decision and then we simulate the fire spread and we update the landscape uh, with new vegetation uh, through growth and we also harvest it for timber. And we're doing this over 100 year time spans. So we have uh, uh, more than two tasks, but two I'm going to concentrate on today are going to be optimizing policies as well as uh, validating policies. And uh, these are both very important things for uh, uh, simulation speed. Uh, Concentrating on the, the validation task, which uh, in a lot of ways is, is more challenging uh, than the optimization, I'll uh, tell you why. Uh, two things we can do to validate are looking at whether the uh, optimization algorithm produced acceptable results or whether the simula simulation uh, specification is actually correct. Uh, now, doing these tasks in something like robotics is actually uh, a lot simpler. There's an intuitive basis for when something fails. You know, if a robot busts through a door, then uh, there's a problem. Um, but when it comes to uh, computational sustainability, we don't always have an intuitive basis to know whether you are doing well in your optimization, uh, uh, whether it's successful or, or um or not. So we use visualization in, in this case. Uh, visualization we built called uh, MDP viz for markup decision processes. Uh, and here we are able to manually change the parameters, generate trajectories, and then explore those trajectories to uh, see what the stochastic outcomes are. Uh, what this doesn't necessarily touch on though is whether the simula simulation specification is correct. Uh, one way in which the specification could change is uh, this is one potential reward function in the domain which combines timber revenue, some function for uh, ecological value, uh, like valuing the species just being present, uh, and then also suppression expenses. Uh, so these are going to tug in different directions uh, depending on uh, the other parameters in the system. So timber revenue, if you say that trees are worth more, then uh, you might want to suppress more uh, trees. And then uh, on the ecology side, since uh, we're modeling a uh, fire prone landscape uh, that historically had a lot more fire. We're going to want to let everything burn because that was the natural circumstance that uh, produces species distribution. Uh, so in a, in a lot of ways selecting how much we reward the uh, ecological state will actually push us towards letting fires burn or if we don't value it then we're going to uh, 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 treat the timber as being more valuable and that could make us want to um, uh, suppress more fires. Uh, so really if we want to uh, figure out whether uh, our specification of the reward function is uh, affecting our optimized policy, uh, we're really going to want to hook the optimizer into the visualization as well so we can uh, change the parameters of the reward function or other simula simulation parameters, optimize the policy, generate trajectories, and explore those trajectories. Uh, of course, the problem here is, in, uh, as in the case of many computational sustainability problems, uh, they are uh, often expensive to simulate. So our 100 years of wildfire simulation, that can take uh, several hours to generate a, a single trajectory. Uh, and when we're optimizing that, uh, since we're going to need to view many different policies, uh, that can take many days. Uh, our solution here is to use something called trajectory synthesis. Uh, it uh, pre-computes a large number of state transitions and loads them into a database. And instead of uh, simulating uh, state transitions every time, you actually uh, query a database uh, when you're trying to generate trajectories. And then you use that to uh, generate uh, trajectories going into the future. Uh, the benefits of this is uh, the database can be much more uh, uh, time efficient than uh, simulating all the dynamics of things like fire spread. 
Uh, and it's also very sample efficient for exogenous variables, which I'll talk about more in a bit. First, I'm going to show you how you construct one of these databases. Um, so we take uh, a few trajectories. We split them into the before state and after state. We put those into a database. And then when we are trying to generate trajectories, uh, we start at an initial state, and then we query the most similar state from the database, and we switch to it. We apply the current policy, we get the result state, and then we keep on doing that until we have a full trajectory, a set of trajectories, uh, and then we generate additional trajectories so that we have um, uh, actual policy value estimate. And uh, uh, now we have a means of uh, much more quickly generating uh, trajectories for optimization and uh, then we can uh, generate a final set of trajectories and then visualize them. Uh, so here we hooked uh, our trajectory synthesis server into a visualization. Uh, I'm going to connect to it. It was loaded on my laptop. I generated this on the plane ride out. Uh, I thought I was going to have a lightning talk, so I'm great, uh, happy to be able to talk about all these things. So now it's generating the trajectories. Uh, it's doing all those database queries. And uh, now we have visualization that we can look at the number of crown fire. Um, uh, pixels burnt, we can look at the action proportion, the harvest, uh, we can uh, filter based on uh, each of these charts and uh, look at what was actually produced by this op uh, previously optimized policy. Uh, optimizing would have taken a, a few minutes, which I uh, don't have quite enough time during the presentation to demo that live. Uh, so when you're modeling trajectory synthesis, there's uh, uh, two high-level steps that you have to uh, carry out. One, you have to sample uh, a policy space to create the data set that you put into the database. And you also need to create a similarity metric uh, for states. Uh, you don't actually need to uh, model similarity of the ex exogenous state. We can cross out weather and ignition and look at just the similarity of the landscapes. And then when we're generating trajectories, we uh, are actually just sampling the fire spread, growth, and harvest that were subjected to that landscape. The uh, reason we can do that is uh, uh, on the top, we have a graphical model for a state transition in a standard Markov decision process. Uh, in typical trajectory synthesis, you look at the similarity of uh, the complete state and actions. And uh, uh, that's a much larger space because it involves uh, hourly wind uh, calculations, for instance. Um, but we can throw those into this uh, factored state on the bottom where uh, uh, WO is, uh, includes weather and ignition location, and we only need to compare landscapes. Uh, so I have a poster. Um, it's going to be around the corner uh, it's in the, the big poster section, so uh, make sure you check that out uh, uh, this evening. And I'd like to thank collaborators, uh, funder, and there's my contact information and questions. We have plenty of time for questions. Uh, well, so I was told uh, eight minutes. Was I? Uh... You were even. You were just at seven. So. Okay. So. <clears throat> So when you take it to the extreme and you load the database with uh, many, many transitions, you know, you're going to uh, have zero loss. Uh, somewhere in the middle, uh, uh, between in infinity and, and zero, you're going to be at the point where there's a lot of error. And uh, uh, that's going to be something that you need to assess empirically. Um, and you have the ability to hold out data and evaluate your ability to produce those particular policies and see whether or not you're misleading yourself. The, the authors of the original algorithm proved some comforting theorems if you're willing to assume Lipschitz continuity for all the quantities involved. Um, so, uh, so that gives you some idea. There are some guarantees, but uh, those assumptions are pretty strong. So. Yeah.